I will show you the top five common Sudoku mistakes to avoid. And if you don't know mistake number five, you'll probably get stuck on this puzzle. And with that, it's solving time. Mistake number one is to overmark candidates. Some solvers will mark every candidate and every cell in the grid. That's just not necessary. Efficient solvers start by looking for digit restrictions from one to nine in any blocks where a candidate can be in only two places. You're going to get clear information without a cluttered grid. So let's start with these ones. You might notice with these ones right here, there's only one place for a one in block six. And you might be tempted to go right here and mark ones in these two spots. It's not necessary. Instead, look to see if you can continue solving, and then you won't have to put any additional marks there. So if you look at these two ones and this one, you might notice you can put one right there in block eight. And then with these two ones, you can put a one right here in block seven. Now you'll see with that one and these two ones, there's only one place for one now in block four. And with those two ones and this one, you can solve the last one there in block one. Greetings, friend. This puzzle's from the 2025 Sudoku Grand Prix. I think it's perfect for showing you how to avoid the top five common Sudoku mistakes. And before I move on, I do want to hear from you. What is one of your common Sudoku mistakes? Do you tend to overmark? Mismark? Do you miss certain strategies? Please, 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 please share that with the other viewers and help me grow the internet's best Sudoku community. And I might just address it in a future video. I do want to hear from you. And we're going to move on now. Mistake number one was overmarking. Mistake number two is missing claiming and pointing pairs. You're like, what are those, Timberlake? Well, I'll show you here as we look at the twos. You might notice with these twos, you got three places for a two in block seven. I say you don't mark that. So if you don't mark that, what you might miss out on is the fact of where two can go in row seven. Since it can't go here, a two can't be in row seven in block seven or eight. So a two has to be in one of these three places in block nine. And so you have a two right there. The only places a two can go in block nine are right there. This is a claiming pair. And by a claiming pair, what it means is since the two has to be somewhere in row seven, and the only place it can be in row seven is block nine, this is the only two places the two can be in the block. And so you can eliminate twos from these areas. And then with this two and this two, you already know they couldn't be here. Very important to find these claiming pairs. Uh, that's all you can do with the twos. If you look around, well, actually you can do a little bit more with these twos. We can solve twos for right there. And then let's move on to the threes. So I talked about claiming pairs. How about pointing pairs? If you notice this three cutting across row four, there's only two places for a three in block five. And this is a little bit different. You know, like Timberlake, what's the difference between a pointing and a claiming pair? Claiming pair, you do elimination within the block. This pointing pair of threes, since the three has to be somewhere in block five, it's restricted to the same column, a three can't be anywhere else outside the column. So with a pointing pair, you can eliminate threes from outside the block, claiming within, pointing outside. And so with this three and these threes, you can't put threes here, otherwise no place to put a three there. You got this three right there, you can actually solve the cell now for a three, displacing that two. As soon as you displace the mark, you can solve it right away for that candidate. And so I do cover pointing pairs and claiming pairs in my Sudoku solving guide. You can download it for free from the pinned comment. And so after doing this three and two mark, you can look at these threes and you can solve for three right here in block one. And then you can do a little bit more solving. You might notice if you look here in this column, you have a one, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you need a two, three, and a four. Well, since you have a four right here and a two right there, this is a naked single three. So we can solve that right away. And since the four is right here again, you can do a two right there and a four right there. If you see that, you might as well just solve it right away. And this now leads with these threes and these threes. You can solve for three in block nine. And then it's going to Restrict the threes to these two places in block four. Okay, let's move on to the fours. 
you might see here, you know, you're going to look and go, can I do some solves or do I need to do marks? And with these fours and this four, the only thing you can do is mark two fours and block three. And then with these two fours and this four, two fours here, and with these fours, two fours right there in block nine. Nothing else I see with the fours. We can move on to the fives. With these two fives, two places for a five in block four. You have three spots here. We're not going to mark that. And no other places we can do with the fives. Move on to the sixes. And we're getting close to mistake number three. We move on to the sixes. With these two sixes, two sixes here in block six. And you may have noticed with these two sixes, two sixes in block seven. And so mistake number three, and this is something you can avoid easily if you're just marking the way I am by doing two possibilities, uh, or can't restrict to two possibilities in a block. Look, check out these sevens. You see these two sevens here in row five and six. So where can the seven go in block six? Well, these two spots, but it's the same two spots as the sixes. So when you see the situation, the six and seven were both restricted to the same two cells. You found a hidden pair. And so a hidden pair means that you can only put those two cans there because if you try to put something else there, you run out of spots for six and seven in block six. And so that's mistake number three is missing these hidden pairs. And if you leave these extra markets in there, it's going to be a lot harder to solve the puzzle because these pairs really block up this row and help put more restriction on it. And so let's continue on with the sevens. What you can see that is by putting this six seven here and six seven here and this two, you can actually saw that for a two and leaves an eight nine naked pair to finish block six. And so that's a nice. That's one of those reasons you want to mark those in pairs. And then with these two sevens, two sevens in block one, and with these two sevens, two sevens in block eight, and then. That's all we can do with the seven. So move on to the eights now. And you might see with these two eights, you can solve for an eight in block seven. And with those two eights, two places for an eight in block nine. Uh, the other thing you might have noticed, and if you caught this early on, you're going to save yourself a couple steps. The three cuts across row four, but so did the eight. And so the eights limit to the same two spots in block Five. And so it's another hidden pair. And this is why I want to bring this mistake up right now. People miss that hidden pair and they miss the power that it provides. Because now at this eight, in these eights, this hidden pair acts as a pointing pair as well. It's a pointing pair for threes and eights. You can restrict the eights of these two cells in block two. And now we can move on to mistake number four. Because if you look at the nines, you're going to go, oh, one nine here. Doesn't seem to have enough impact on there. I don't really need to do much marking, but that would be a mistake. Instead, look at the impact on the row, column, and the block. RCB, I call it. That's mistake number four. If you look closer, one, you'll notice that the nines are restricted to these two spots in block five, along with the four. So it ends up being a four nine naked pair. And the reason you can mark that is because the three eight hidden pairs right there. And so this 4-9 acts as a pointing pair, so that can't be a 4 anymore, but it can't be a 6-7 because of that hidden pair, and it can't be a 1-3-5-8 that's already in the row. This has to be a 2. And then you displace that 4, which displaces the 5, displaces the 3, and now you only have one cell remaining in block 4. It's a 9. Awesome. The other thing you may have noticed is you had 9s right here, in two places in block seven. So that's a six, nine, naked pair. Adds more restriction. If we go up here, we only have one cell remaining, row, column, block, that has to be a five, which would be a two, seven right here. But if you have this two, here's your two displacing that seven. And you see all that impact, now we're making some more solves. And so we can now look here in block five, because you did that three there, this is a three, and that is going to be your eight. And now with this two, again, row, column, block, you can focus over here and forget that you actually can displace this mark and solve this for two. So go back and look at that impact and just continue to use your marks and try to 
get more solves in because that's where your restrictions are. If you find one thing out of place, you can make a solve pretty quickly. Okay, and now we can look here and you'll notice you have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and column six. The only thing missing is a nine. So you can put a nine right there, a nine and a six right here. And this part right here is probably where you got stuck. Because uh, it, it leads up to mistake number five, which can be pretty hard to find, but it's here. This isn't a very hard puzzle. It just requires no more than the seven strategies I teach in my Sudoku solving guide. But this next one is a little harder to spot because you got to look in more than one block and in more than one candidate. So when you do get stuck, where you want to go next is you want to focus on heavy houses. So these are the rows, columns, and blocks that have at least five cells filled out. So let's start here in row nine. You have a one, two, three, six, seven, and a nine. So you just need a four, five, and an eight. So I'll put the four, five, and eight right there. So it's going to be less marking and more restriction. That's why you want to focus on these. Get rid of the five right there and get rid of the eight right there. We create a bunch of by value cells, BVCs I call them, which is good. That means you're close to finding, you know, some more restrictions. Let's look up here in row one because in row one you have the same three empty cells you got a one two three four six seven you need a five eight nine all right and that could be a five eight nine this can't be a five and this could be a five eight nine now you have to notice something here because this is mistake number five people overlook you gotta look for pairs outside of one block match up row one and row nine so i talked to storm seeker um, through reddit He's a very experienced solver on Sudoku forums. And looking at the restrictions here in column seven, he'd look at something along the lines of you get a one, two, three, five right there. So that's four different digits. And then notice that there's a four, six, seven that looks at this cell and a four, six, seven that looks at this cell. So you have seven different digits that look at these two cells. So they're restricted to just an eight and nine, but it's a naked pair. And this is huge. It's a naked pair outside of one block. It's one, eight nine here, and the other's there. So an eight nine got to be one of these two cells. You can use that to make restrictions. And so to find the next solve, you got to go down here and go, hey, that can't be an eight anymore. Could you put an eight right there? You don't have enough places to put. Uh, you'd have to put two nines in these two cells. That's not going to work. So this is beautiful, and this is how you make progress is by looking for that. And that's an easy mistake. Uh, easy to overlook at the, this point of solving you go from single candidates to start looking for pairs and this is going to help you identify these types of pairs so now what does that do for our solving we're going to go back to those other mistakes that we're trying to avoid the rcbs the pointing claiming pairs and use that to help you make more progress so that's got to be a four that's got to be a five that's got to be an eight right this four means we can displace that four solve this four four nice and then you can remove the eight from right there and we're going to do some more solving here so what you might notice is yeah the four five and the eight so then with these two fives and this five you know that's got to be a five and then this is going to have to be a five and you can remove the five from right there all righty and then Let's look across row three. You got a one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. This has to be a six. And now look at that impact. That's a seven, and that's going to be a six right there. Nice. And then you notice with this eight, nine, it can't be in this cell. The only thing left is a seven, which will put an eight, nine right here, but you got this eight here. So look at that impact. Well, that's a nine, that's an eight, and now you want to clean up all these marks. And this nine, now you can disambiguate the four nine right here. This is nice. You got a full house. So what's the only thing you got? A six. So you can put a six right there. Now that six and this six, you can solve for a six right here. With this eight, that's a nine. And that's an eight. All right? These full houses are a sure thing. So solve them when you can. So that's a seven displacing this seven. So you know that's got to be a seven. Let's not forget this cell up here, which has got to be a six. And this is going to be a four. So you look here at the last two. Look in the block first and go, okay, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. We just need a five and a nine. And so you go, oh, there's our nine. 
So that's got to be your 9. Our last digit is a 5. Now, see if you can spot the naked pair in this next puzzle. Thank you so much for watching.